Woo! 7 a.m. And we're going to get a car. On today's episode of Watch Jay Argo, the Mini Cooper S John Cooper Works. I promised you guys was coming two months ago. Finally came through. Let's go. What is going on guys? I am Watch J Argo and Eric and I are, as you can see, just pulling back in the driveway here at the shop after six hours of driving. As you would expect, we had to go all the way to Kansas City to pick up the real John Cooper Works Mini Cooper S. Not one where the owner said it was a John Cooper Works. This time we were at a Carfax. We saw the VIN reflects it's a JCW. The Carfax is clean. Everything came back perfectly. So we have a very rough, very broken John Cooper Works. So here we are with my 2009 Mini Cooper. I am excited about this one. Uh, many of you that know JCWs will know immediately what we learned. Uh, you can tell by these giant brakes. So if the brakes have wings like the Mini logo on them, or they say works like those ones, it's very clearly a real John Cooper works. This has the cross spoke wheels with the John Cooper works logos on it. It's slammed, which is crazy. We gotta talk a little bit more about that as we go around this car. But it's on race lands, as you guys would probably expect because it is a customized Mini. It's not on uh, anything fancy, not slammed on conies or something like that. But it's covered in uh, stickers. We've, we've got the Travis Scott going on here. Some thick with two C's. Made in Germany barcode, noisy neighbors. Later nerds, send it in the, is that Seinfeld or is it a, I don't know, what Gilmore Girls? I, there was a logo like that in some kind of show. ECS tuning right here. We've got the heart grab handle. <laughs> and we've got Matchbox here on the windshield. This car is fully stickered up. And coming inside it, what's really crazy is they don't get S badges. I feel like these are supposed to have special JCW badges right there or something, but maybe not. I don't know. Coming inside the car, we have the incredible red interior. Take a look at that. Power folding mirrors. Really, really cool red. Unfortunately, the driver's seat is hurt, uh, but it does have miles on it, so what else would you expect? The John Cooper Works uh, appliques are kind of coming off there, but uh, these are special. Usually they're painted. The JCW appearance car I had, these were painted. But, oh, I bet these were swapped over from another car or something like that. Will the new Corvette that we haven't ever talked about start? I bet it starts. I didn't know it had electric seats. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever met, maybe the Z06 has uh, unpowered seats. But it should have power recall. Oh, look at that. This car is too good. Start it. Oh, come on. <laughs> Eric's sliding this car over just a hair here at the dealership so we can unload the Mini. We've got the John Cooper Works badge on the back. The single, the motto center exhaust instead of the dual like an S would have. Uh, the spoiler, like I said again, the beautiful, beautiful red interior and the options that I love on Mini Coopers. Let's hop in here for just a second. Obviously all the wood trim. Ooh, Eurogasm, 1320 and uh, a donkey. Uh, we got some wheel spacers here in the seat. If you guys can see that, the front bumper is also in here so it doesn't fall off because it's so low that you really can't get it on a trailer or a tow truck without having the bumper off the car. We've got factory navigation, BMW CCC. I love that. The digital climate control, everything. Yeah, we got the mood lighting. It's all here. And this boost gauge that uh, somebody went to, well, you guys know what store that is and bought that and just tossed it in there. So that's pretty funny. Auto high beams, is that is that auto high beams? I think it might just be auto lights. I'd be really pumped if it was auto high beams. Anyway, this is the best looking cluster Mini ever did. The new ones, I mean, basically the pure screen clusters are the best ones Mini ever made. And of course, the navigation controller down here in the center console, which is basically just iDrive. That's pretty cool. It's like micro iDrive. Who would have guessed the e-brake works on this thing? The sunroof screens aren't sagging too much. Let's get it unhooked, unloaded, and fire it up here in a minute. All right, driving my Mini for the first time here. A little more that way. A little more. 
we didn't know if we were gonna make it off the trailer. But we did it. <laughs> we were gonna start this thing up, but it, it doesn't move as you would expect. Uh, that's why we got it for an insane deal. We paid just $2,500 for a real John Cooper. You just gonna go do donuts? I would. Look at this collection of enthusiast cars. All right, two insane enthusiast cars and one that's pretty boring. We have the new Corvette that we'll talk about some other time that is somehow awesome. This Mini Cooper John Cooper works that's tuned, lowered, everything. We do know it's tuned. It looks like it's got an intercooler based on the zip ties and the shape. And a Ford Fusion Hybrid because we just happen to love those things. All right, guys, it's the next day because after we picked up this Mini, this R56 in Kansas City, well, we are somehow the Mini shop here, so we had to go buy another Mini right after that. So I've got an R50 sitting outside. Let's take a two second tour of the R50. It is raining out here, but this R50 is gold. It's an 04 blown head gasket. It did have the factory roof rack at one point there. Uh, that just kind of screws on and off to those mounting brackets there. And it has a gold interior boost CD and it just looks really nice. This thing has 99 thousand miles and it went ahead and did the normal mini thing and blew its head gasket these ones are interesting too because they have headlight sprayers i think they got rid of those on the r56 there's no more pop out sprayers from what i can tell okay back inside this is an 09 john cooper works like i said right behind me is another 09 s so same same but different same same but different obviously the brakes the tune and a few other fun things like the cross spoke wheels the special appliques and the door sills. John Cooper Works logos on everything basically. And this one is gonna be our donor for that one because this one has a good transmission. And this one, all we know is that it was leaking fluid out of the transmission and it won't move at all. We thought, you know, maybe it's the clutch. I don't think it's the clutch. It doesn't make any weird noises. You can put it in gear and nothing happens. And when we bought it, they said something about seals and a CV, we'll see. It may have broke the entire transmission case, which would be super rare, but uh, it's broken and it was dirt cheap for a JCW. It was uh, just a hair more than we paid for one of those. And this one is modded. So let's take a look under the hood. So like I said, all the hardware under the hood is the same as the S and we have plenty of S's running around here, uh, but there's a tune and this one has pops and bangs. This one has an aftermarket silicon intake here, a bunch of silicon hose. For some reason, there's a that boost gauge inside with a broken vacuum line feeding it there, which is hilarious. Look at that. There's some brass hardware down there so they could hook up a manual boost gauge. I really don't know why uh, you could hook up an OBD2 boost gauge and get the same results without running uh, a hose. It's right there <laughs> through the pillar. I mean, come on. That is absolutely terrible. Now it does have aftermarket suspension too. Uh, I'm sure you guys noticed that it sits insanely low. So this is on Racelands, uh, basically the worst shocks there are for the most part. I heard it's actually all the way up on the Racelands right now. Uh, those are a hot boy stance shock absorber that is absolutely worthless. It's only good at lowering the car, uh, basically destroys the handling. So not a good thing. We have aftermarket headlights here just like the ones that we tore out of uh, the other R56, R2012. Not quite as good looking though. These are really cheap, but hey, they are headlights and I bet they work. Who knows if the DRLs and all that stuff light up. I noticed a bunch of cut wires. Yeah, look at this. I noticed that, so that's never a good sign. Who knows how much of the headlights are actually working. Uh, aftermarket intercooler, like we said, I did slap the bumper back on there so it would look like uh, a complete car. It's sparkling silver metallic, which is basically champagne gold. And the battery, well, the battery's 100% dead. So let's give this thing some power and fire it up. We've got the NOCO hooked up to this thing. We're probably ready to start it. I did try to charge it when I brought it in here, but the battery was so dead, it was displaying 0.1 volts and would not even start the charger. So hopefully after we fire this thing up, uh, we can make it work. The battery has a 2022 date code on it, so it should be just fine. Uh, 
maybe there's some phantom draws in here from all the ridiculous mods that have destroyed the battery. All right. <laughs> it's such a good sound. This is the nicest sound compared to all the other cars we get in. It ran great last time. Now it doesn't want to run. What's going on? No gas pedal. Well, I don't know what happened between uh, Kansas City and here, but it will no longer run. It starts and then dies. I'm gonna clear the codes real fast, see what's going on. Maybe we can make it run again and go from there. All right, let's take a look at what we're working with here. We've got three active codes and a bunch of history codes and actually some more uh, active codes. So bypass blow off activation, cat converter downstream O2, ambient temp sensor, and then all these battery issues, combustion misfires, several cylinders, that's hilarious. And vehicle system voltage DME master relay. I guess that's because the battery's dead. Just a ton of faults here. Junction box electronics, steering column over voltage, which is true. I mean, the, the NOCO overvolts everything. Whole bunch of failed light things from those nonsense headlights. Whew, it's supposed to have really nice headlights in it. Unfortunately, these aftermarket ones can't auto aim and do all the cool startup stuff these cars are supposed to do. And then finally, We've got some spots in here with no codes. All right, I cleared the codes, but we are left with this ambient temp sensor one. Maybe the MAF is unplugged or something like that, so I'm gonna have to go take a look at that. Um, other than that, I think we're gonna be okay. So let's try to start it again uh, after I go check the MAF. All right, start, girl, start. Let's see what happens. Nope, one more. Battery's gone. I've never met so many cross-threaded or poorly installed bolts in my life. Uh, somehow, they even ruined the T-bolt that holds the battery cable together. These are little, it's basically a BMW thing, Nissan, a few other companies use them too. But as these T-bolts tighten down, they wedge the battery terminal together there, so it gets a good grip on the battery post, and uh, wow, I was, I kind of think that might even be cross-threaded. How do you cross-thread the battery hold down? I know it won't focus on it, but everything on here. Well, it's got race lands on it, which tells you all you need to know about a car. It's been destroyed. So we've got a battery in there and we've got the codes cleared, even though they're probably back from this low battery condition we just had. Let's see what happens. Nothing happens. A few moments later. Try number 50 here. Let's see what happens. Also, does the nav work now? Home, navigation, the screen's messed up for the CCC. Ah, I think we got it. Show me map. Cool. It shows we're in Kansas. That's good enough for me. Uh, that looks really cool for being, what, 2009 graphics right there. I love this speedometer too. It's the best one with the screen in the center and the sweeping speedometer around it. How cool is that? Here's the iDrive navigation down here. Um, the DVD itself, this is something that's pretty crazy. So it says navigation system there, and I found the DVD was in there, which is where it should not work correctly. If you push this button here, it's got a removable faceplate, and that's the DVD drive for the navigation. So it says R56 detachable faceplate right there, if you guys can see that. I don't think it's gonna focus, uh, but you put it on like it's just some aftermarket head unit, and it clicks into place, and it gives you your controls back. So, uh, we got the navigation working. It wasn't working before. I was a little worried. Uh, I'm very sad about this screen having those three bubbles in it, but that said, it's got Bluetooth. This literally has everything. So, here we go. Oh, it does say it's out of gas too, but it says there's 67 miles of range. Why won't you run? It runs! Look, I don't know what it wanted. I didn't want to start it wide open, but I started it with the throttle on the floor thinking it'd be flood clear like all the other cars, but instead it just gave it wide open throttle and started. I wonder if it was like an oil pressure thing, like it was trying to build up oil pressure or something like that. 
but you can hear this thing has a crazy exhaust on it and it's supposed to have pops and bangs aftermarket tune come on where's the pops and bangs i want to hear the pop 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 oh wait sport okay so it's in sport now we got sport on the dash Still no pops and bangs. You'd think sport would be the pops and bangs button there. 138,000 miles. At least it's got auto lights. I think it's got auto wipers. At least it looks like it's got a rain sensor in the windshield there. Um, just the navigation. That sells me on any car. This is definitely one of the coolest nav implementations ever. How do the windows work? Hey! Even the auto windows work. Auto up. It needs relearned. Let's try the other side. Oop. Works perfect. Need to relearn both the auto ups. Now it did say there were no faults with the sunroof. So we're gonna try it. There's our dual vent, they both opened. Come on, go full auto. Well, no full auto today. The sunroof seems to work really well. I spoke too soon. It doesn't work. Just gotta get careful with them. A couple slight little touches of the switch and you can always make them come back. Let's just rip this thing out of here since it doesn't work. Ah, oh, it was full of water. I taped the boost gauge line back together there, that vacuum line, and it immediately started running way better. Let's see what happens. Well, it does sound cool, I gotta give you that. All right, let's, we're gonna go ahead and shut it off for a minute now. Oh, engine operating at reduced output, but why? Why would the engine be operating at reduced output? The key seems to be missing its chrome ring. That's pretty funny. Let's hook the scanner back up and see what's going on with the engine. I do know this happened before while we were picking this car up. I'm gonna push it back here just a little bit. That kind of looks like engine oil. I, I don't know what that is, but uh, they said the transmission's gone. Do you guys think that's gearbox? Or, uh, it sure smells like oil. I really didn't plan on getting this far into troubleshooting this thing in the first video. Uh, I just wanted to talk about how the John Cooper Works Mini obviously is the best one. We finally have one. It's so exciting. And all of a sudden it's just being ridiculous. Uh, also, it's got the Harman Kardon system, the CCC nav, like, it's so cool, but uh, it looks like some really bad things might be happening here with the engine. After I scanned it, there's some, a bunch of new present codes that are not good codes to see. Uh, I was trying to give it little rev blips and listen for any rod knock on D-cell or anything like that, um, but I might have overpaid for this car by a lot. We may have really overpaid for this car. Here is the report. We have knock sensor electric. That's a new present code and super knocking. I've never seen super knocking in my life, uh, but I could hear a slight tick. It didn't sound like rod knock, but it was some kind of weird tick right before we shut it down. This combined with the giant puddle of oil underneath it and whatever is going on with the transmission, which we have no idea, that's what we actually have to troubleshoot on this thing, uh, those all add up to something really bad happened up front. That really bad thing was probably the previous owners that put race lands on it destroyed the car. Pretty much whenever a hot boy gets a hold of these things, it's all over for the car. The car is literally just destined to die a terrible death. So anyway, I've got my cheap 09 John Cooper Works Mini that I was planning on taking the transmission out of that one and putting it in this one, or at least just a CV. We, first, we thought it was just a CV. It seems like it's worse than that, but uh, we're gonna get everything moved and get this thing on a lift. And in the next video, we'll start troubleshooting what could actually be wrong with this thing. Maybe we get lucky and it's an oil cooler line or something like that, or maybe it really is the transmission, but that oil looked way too clean and fresh. Uh, it just didn't smell like, feel like, or anything like gearbox oil. Uh, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between uh, engine oil and gearbox because obviously it would smell horrific. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchchair.com for cool shirts like the one I'm wearing under this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you 
next time. This poor Mini, somebody probably paid $45,000 for it when they were the first owner. Beautiful spec, champagne with red, just insane. And then uh, this is how it's ended up. I left the Travis Scott in the thick and I took off all the other decals except for uh, noisy neighbors. Man, is this, kind of looks like this tail light's got a bunch of lights out. GoPro mount on the back, that beautiful center exit exhaust. That's really cool. Anything else going on back here? Oh, come on. These struts are bad too? Well, we got floor mats, that's something, and some kind of uh, shroud in that box there. These struts are obviously completely bad. Wheel spacers in here, standard hot boy stuff. Let's see, brake pads, all right. Uh, parts. Are these light bulbs? Ooh, valve stem seals, that's not good. I, the last thing I wanna find in a car is a box of new valve stem seals. Cheap USB and accessory splitter there, that's probably going straight in the trash. Um, we got this heart grab handle here. Anything in here? Ooh, come on, there it goes. Uh, a plug for something that definitely belongs on a Mini. Can you guys imagine if we figure out what's going on with this, hopefully there's no issues with this engine because we don't actually have a spare engine for this. We had a spare trans, but we have all the suspension from that R56. We could rip all of the uh, factory shocks off, put them back on this car to make it nice again, throw the Racelands uh, up for sale so we can get rid of those. Somebody else can ruin their Mini with them and uh, we could have a Canyon Carver. I mean, these things just rip. I think it's 230 horsepower, crazy.